It is Friday the 4th of March. I'm Raf. And I'm Travis, and this is Show and Tell. Where each week we bring one headline that we found interesting and we talk about it. But neither of us know which headline we'll be telling each other about and we only have four minutes each to explain it. Today we would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and to pay our respect to Elders both past, present and future. Alright, I think I am going first this week for the fourth consecutive <laughs> time now that we're filming this. Because yes, I accidentally forgot to plug in our microphone as we took oh, our first right. take. Yeah. Well, I, what? I did not record the audio. Oh, <laughs> Travis. We'll have to do it again. Oh no, I... Round four is the lucky one. Can you please enlighten me as to what your headline is this week, Travis? Would you like to guess, Rafka? Could it potentially be the floods? Yes, it is the floods. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there have been devastating floods across New South Wales and across Queensland, and continuing now as of the time of this video being filmed. Hundreds of thousands of people have been evacuated, hundreds more have been rescued, mm -hmm. and 15 people um, at the time of filming this video have sadly died across the two states. And we've got entire regional towns that are still underwater, pretty much. There have also been some remarkable stories, though, coming out of this. We've got people rescued from by boats from mm -hmm. rooftops, ducking underneath power lines. Um, yeah. The Sikh volunteers travelling from Melbourne to the flood-affected community of Lismore, North and mm -hmm. New South Wales, to provide food mm -hmm. to the people in those communities. That was 34 hours overnight. Oh my God, Straight yeah. Straight driving. And Shout out to Rafka for reporting on that and other flood related things. Please check out a Guardian Australia coverage. Um, there'll be a link up there in, in the- The magic box. The magic box, yes. <laughs> and also a huge shout out to the regional local journalists who are actually on the ground and who are part of these communities and yeah. who are providing this crucial minute by minute updated information. Yeah because it really is life and death. But today I would actually, I'm not gonna to attempt to talk about all of that because it's been spoken about a lot better by other people. I'd actually like to talk about disaster relief mm -hmm. specifically and to get even more specific federal level government disaster relief. So the money coming from the government to help yeah. the people on the ground. The money coming from SCOMO and Co. Um, SCOMO and Co. SCOMO and Co. Coalition. Oh, it works in two different ways. I like that. Thank you. You're welcome. I just thought of it. It's perfect. Take four is bringing magical <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, and uh, getting even more specific as well, I'm not going to be detailing every single federal mm -hmm. government initiative. I'm just going to be detailing, I'm um, talking about three of the biggest numbers that have been spoken about in this in this last week. And those numbers are, the government is claiming to have spent 17 billion mm -hmm. on disaster relief over the, over the past three years. There's a $5 billion government emergency release fund, relief fund, response fund, sorry. And there's a 600 million preparing Australia program. Okay. And all of these have been mentioned um, in different articles and I wanted to kind of dig down into each a bit more because I kept seeing them mentioned and I wanted to know a bit more about them. But not everything is really as it seems, it turns out. Really, Travis? Why is that? Well, I'll tell you after. <laughs> and I'll start with the biggest number, that's $17 billion, which that's, oh boy, that is a lot of Rihanna's. A lot of Rihanna's. Our favourite unit of measurement here at Wrapped is the Rihanna head. We'll have them popping up on the screen mm, to and we, As we all know, Rihanna's net worth is $1.7 billion. Mm -hmm. um, so. so we've got 17 billion. That's like almost seven Rihanna heads, right? That's a lot of Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how much the federal government is claiming to have spent on disaster relief over the past three years. But some people have pointed out that pandemic measures have actually been included in this number mm. and they totaled $13 billion. Okay, a big chunk of a the relief. A big chunk, uh, most of it. So if you subtract that, it's only $4 billion have actually been spent over the last three years by the federal government mm. on things like fires and floods. The rest is actually on the COVID pandemic. Okay. And then next, looking at this... 5 billion emergency response fund um, that was set up by the government in 2019. Mm -hmm. You may remember 2019 for... The Black Summer bushfires. Yep, um, that's the one, which of course were these devastating bushfires in Eastern Australia, completely mm -hmm. unprecedented, and they also c caused a huge amount of um, destruction and loss of life. Mm -hmm. So this emergency response fund was established back then, at the time 4 billion, but it has grown today to 5 billion. How? Um, it's earned a lot of interest. That's how it's 836 million to be exact, mm -hmm. which is not a bad return. But of that money spent since it's been established, only 50 million has actually okay. left that account. More has been committed, but in terms of money that's actually left the account, 
$50 million. So this has been criticised in some quarters. Mm -hmm. Emergency Management Minister Bridget McKenzie said the purpose of this fund is only for when other funds are completely exhausted. And this is a Nationals party member Mm -hmm. um, saying this, by the way. Um, You may remember the Nationals as the party that had um, quite a tense negotiation of the government over net zero. But she made the grim assessment that with climate change, we'll need these funds put aside for more intense future events. So that's not the message people want to hear. No, even with these record-breaking floods and entire towns underwater, we've we've been told, and this is what the science is telling us, that there is still... More to come. More to come. Labour has taken the chance, though, to make an election promise mm-hmm. to change the way the fund works and make sure that $200 million leaves it every year to fund disaster prevention and resilience. And the last one, I'll go through it really quickly because I know I'm out of time, is the $600 million Preparing Australia program, which is providing grants to communities for disaster risk reduction. Okay. And the first round of funding was just last year, late last year. Mm-hmm. But if you remember that photo that we put up before of Lismore, Rafka is nodding along even though she has not seen it, but in the magic of editing, it will be <laughs> it will be somewhere back there. Flood board is peaked at 14.4 metres, which is a record. Yeah. And it's also just one of the most flood prone areas in the country, but it was not listed as a priority area for this flood funding in mm-hmm. the first round of this Preparing Australia program. Mm -hmm. And what did people think about that? People didn't think very good things about it, especially Mm -hmm. the local coalition MP who actually called it crazy. It seems crazy. Um, And he was not happy at all. He says he later updated and said that the issue has now been fixed. We don't know yet if this means it'll be listed as a priority area in future rounds of funding, Mm -hmm. but he has said it's been fixed. Mm -hmm. Um, And lastly, very quickly, honourable mention to federal MP Peter Dutton. His face will be there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Can we have that photo where he's like in darkness and just, and have you seen it? And just as like the top off of his head. just his head? Because the lights actually accidentally went off in the press gallery. So... Oh, can Just. that be our thumbnail? <laughs> <laughs> he has been the gift that keeps on giving for critics of the government. Um, <laughs> when he announced on Twitter a GoFundMe page for a flood-affected community in his Queensland electorate. A GoFundMe page. A GoFundMe page, yes. Leaving one Twitter user to ask, isn't this the role of the government? A round of applause to the yes. Twitter user. And thank you, Travis, for explaining how the government is responding and I guess what locals and MPs from the ground are feeling about about the way the response is. Yeah, it just goes to show you can have these really big numbers Mm -hmm. thrown around, but um, it doesn't really tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. But of course, um, if you do have the means, we'll be, I'll be putting a list of organizations that you can donate to if you you can, down in the comments and in the description. Over to you, Rafka. Okay, so today my story exits Australia and it crosses international borders, but we are not talking about Russia or Ukraine. We have done a breakdown introduction Mm. to the context of the conflict currently happening in Ukraine. We'll have a link to that on the screen to check that out as well if you're curious. But Travis, I would like you to take a guess at where my headline is based today. Well, (laughs) (laughs) as we established in in a previous cut of this video, and I would like it to remain on the record that you don't know the difference between the northern and the southern hemisphere. That was for banter purposes. Okay. Solely for entertainment. I'll leave, I'll leave that up to our audience to, to decide <laughs> who they believe that. Is it in North America? It is in North it America. Is, okay. How did you know, Travis? Oh, I'm just omniscient. Yeah. Omniscient. Is that how you say that? Omniscient? Oh, shit. I don't know. I could be wrong too. I don't know the difference between north and south. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Travis is correct. This story is coming from New York City in North America. The headline is, a man was charged with hate crimes after seven Asian American women were assaulted in New York. So there was a spree of attacks against seven Asian American women in New York City last Sunday. The good news is the man was found. It was a 28 year old who was originally from Florida and he was charged with seven counts of assault and attempted assault connected with hate crimes. And so these hate crimes kind of allude to a greater issue across the United States but it definitely resonates in Australia, especially after seeing reported incidents of hate crimes against Chinese Australians throughout last year. So that's something that I'd like to talk about a little bit more. Because of the COVID pandemic. Because of the COVID pandemic, exactly. So anti-Asian American and Pacific Islander hate crimes have reportedly increased a lot over the last year in America. I'd like you to take a guess at what percentage you think it is higher by now. 
I know you know, but is it is it somewhere? I'd put it between about three hundred thirty-eight percent and three hundred forty percent. He's he's on the dollar. Um, unfortunately, it has risen by three hundred thirty-nine percent, according to the Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism. And just earlier this week. We saw the family of Gui Ying Ma announce that she passed away after 10 weeks in a coma. She is another Asian woman who was hit by a man with a rock last autumn in Queens, also in New York. And I'm not going to make you guess because you already know, but many other Asian Americans have passed away in just New York in just the last two months as a result of violence against the community. And that number is four in just that small amount of time in one state. And so this hate reported across the United States resonates in Australia. And so last March, it was reported that several Sydney councillors actually received threatening letters delivered to their workplaces, accusing them of starting the, the pandemic, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Not, not to even give any kind mm -hmm. of credence to what these people are saying, but there's just a growing body of, of research mm -hmm that's completely debunked any kind of lab leak idea mm -hmm. or the fact that the Chinese government or the Chinese people had any involvement mm -hmm. in releasing this virus to the world. So, so letters like these declaring death to all Chinese people and pointing blame at Chinese people for the pandemic, it's just ridiculous. No, um, there's absolutely no basis. Exactly. Yeah. And so these letters are just one example of anti-Chinese and anti-Asian, but also migrant sentiment growing across Australia out of the pandemic. So there's a lot of research done right. around this, especially last year with the pandemic. And so the Lowy Institute did a study that found a shocking rate of Chinese Australians had actually experienced physical threats and abuse during the pandemic. And that number is one in five. So the rates are really high. And when you look at the Scanlon report into social cohesion, which every year tracks Australia's attitude towards multiculturalism and migrants, they found through 2020 to 2021, a heightened negative sentiment towards Chinese nationals. And some more shocking numbers found in that report, uh, close to half of the respondents felt negatively towards Australians from China, but also Iraq, Lebanon, which is where my family are from, and Sudan. And I find that a little bit ironic or odd, given that 84% of the respondents also felt positively about multiculturalism in the country. Which really makes no sense at all, makes those two no numbers, sense. because that means that people who said that they had no problem with multiculturalism also... Feel negatively towards these migrant communities. Yeah. So it's definitely an ongoing discussion that doesn't end with the pandemic. Uh, and, and that's my headline for today. So both of our headlines were pretty weighty and negative today. Yeah. Have a cup of tea, have a biscuit. And um, let's get to the scrapbook. Yeah. We wrote with a pen this week. <laughs> yeah. Fresh out of blood. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the 4th of March, show and tell episode number five. Thank you See for you watching. See you next week. Bye.